boots on. Wilder and I are about to go milk goats. We have a fun day today. I am gonna be planting a bunch of flowers all over the place. I have a lot more coming, but I'm gonna plant what I've got today. Hopefully this cold weather we've been having is done. And this weekend we'll be planting all of our summer crops. But first thing, I need to check on my sick chicken. I have been treating her with Epsom salt baths and I'm probably gonna give her some Epsom salt internally today. I don't think she has mites. I don't think she has a big lice problem. Her vent is all poopy. That's why I gave her Epsom salt bath. But I don't think she's egg bound because I can't feel an egg in there. And I've done all the things that you would do for an egg bound hen except actually go up inside of her. They, everyone really cautions against doing that in case you break the egg. And then you've got a whole nother host of problems on her hands. So. I had been keeping her separated, but she looked good enough yesterday that I stuck her back in with the flock. So I'm gonna see if I can find her. Let's see if we can find our sick chicken. I'm kind of thinking I should have kept her separated again last night, but let's see. Hi. Yeah, I think that's her. Back there. Okay. How's your gosling? Good. He's really big. What is his name? Everyone keeps asking. Dare. Dare. <coughs> what I found when I closely observed her was that she did have a lot of um, poop stuck around her vent. It wasn't really stuck to her vent, but I went ahead and gave her a warm Epsom salt bath. Everything I read says that's like one of the best things you can do for a sick chicken. And I still haven't figured out really what's wrong. I mean, it could be so many different things and there's only so many uh, things to treat your chicken with. And anyway, I have her upside down to keep her calm and her vent looks really clean today. There's no poop stuck to her butt. Yeah, and I've, I've felt all around to see if I could feel an egg stuck in there, but I mean, she's pretty small underneath all these feathers and I don't feel anything. She loved the Epsom salt bath. I should have filmed that. Y'all could have seen how much she loved it. I don't think she has sauerkraut. And I've checked her for mites and everything. So anyways, I'm hoping that she just needed that Epsom salt bath and that's just gonna perk her up. Another thing it could be is something called uh, chicken gleet, which is when they um, get basically a yeast infection. I haven't seen any mites, which that's you check for those at night. Um, and that's good because any mites at all, we'd have to do a major cleanup. I'm just gonna keep an eye on her and see if she's eating and drinking better today. If she isn't, then we'll figure out the next step. Oh yeah, I am gonna give her that internal Epsom salts this morning. Let's put you in with everybody else. Here you go. Time to milk the goats. Hi ladies. Good morning, milking time. Don't hammer my milking stuff, okay? Why don't you go hammer... Dinosaur? A dinosaur, sure. Monica's milk supply has gone way down, and I think it's because a couple of things. One, she really needed to be wormed, and two, she hasn't liked the feed that I've been giving her, so she wasn't eating much of it. Um, she's getting plenty of forage, but grain is really what makes most dairy animals provide an abundance of milk. Obviously, with totally grass-fed cows, it's a little different. But they, you know, grass-fed cows give drastically less milk than a grain-fed cow. I don't actually know of anyone that milks dairy goats that doesn't give them grain. If you have heard of that or know of, a, of someone that does, I would love to hear about it. So I'm finally figuring out which feed she'll eat, which combo of feed, and slowly working in the feed that I actually want her to have, and it's working. You can see how small her udder is. What she really likes are these non-GMO pellets that I have but I really prefer to give my goats organic feed. Um, so I tried organic mash and she would not have it. So I switched to organic pellets and she wouldn't eat those either. 
Um, so I'm slowly, I mean, I was slowly working those in anyway because that's how you change a ruminant speed is slowly, but um, I'm going even more slowly, hopefully. Hold on, buddy. Hopefully working up to only giving her the organic feed. One of the reasons, I've always been pretty satisfied with non-GMO because it's what I could get locally, but recently a local lady opened a feed store and I'm pretty excited about having local access to organic feed. Before I would have to drive an hour to get it, so I would kind of go back and forth between non-GMO and organic, but I'm pretty excited to get this stick with organic once my goats will actually eat it. Norma Jean's udder is very full. <laughs> She's not a picky goat. She is a lot easier to care for. Um, and it could be that we're gonna sell Monica. Um, when you're rebuilding your herd, this is a lot of the decisions you have to make, is who are you gonna keep, who are you gonna sell? And I want hardy goats that produce milk, are good moms, that aren't finicky. Um, and Monica's just a little too finicky for me. I'm gonna give her a little more time she may not be staying. Norma Jean though, Norma Jean is staying. I love this goat. What do you have? I have some fishies. You got some fishies? Can Those are tadpoles. Can you go put them back? Mm. Those are Joy Joy's experiment. Go put them back. Joyful's doing, raising some tadpoles over here in a sled, <laughs> right here. Hey, let's put the fishies back. You did a good job catching that one, but they need to live in their, in their home, okay? Back. Yeah, let's put him back. Good job. Joyful will be so thankful you put her tadpoles back. I think milking would probably only take me 20 minutes, <laughs> but it usually takes me about an hour just because, you know, there's a lot of other distractions always happening. <laughs> Anytime you're an animal and you're scratching its neck and it puts its head down like that, that means more, more. Aww. So sweet. Uh, I hate touching electric fences. You can see my chicken right there is still all hunched up. Don't touch the fence. Grace is turning it on. Back up. Hope I guess I'm going to isolate her and then, um, again, and then try to do some more things today to help her stay inside. No, can't come out yet. You gotta lay your eggs. See how hunched up she is? Do you feel better? Yeah. Good. Nothing like daddy's French toast and mommy's goat milk to make a, make a baby feel better. I'm actually not gonna eat yet. I've got to figure out what's going on what, with this what? chicken. She doesn't have a respiratory illness. She's not seizing, she's not got a runny nose, she's not, got, she's not coughing. She just stands in a corner puffed up. She's been wormed. I think I'll go ahead and dust her with DE in case I just can't see the mites or lice. Um, and that's not gonna hurt her anyway. And then I'll give her the Epsom salt water. So I've been watching um, her to see if she's straining when trying to use the bathroom. I think, I think she is, which would mean that she's egg bound, but I, being egg bound is really rare, but also, um, I mean, I've done everything that you're supposed to do if a chicken's egg bound. And they also say they'll die within 48 hours, and it's been way longer than that. Ah! Figuring out illnesses whenever the affected party can't speak is really challenging. <laughs> Usually I 
isolate in my feed room, but um, since I'm about to do a bunch of things with her, I went ahead and just isolated her out here. Gave her this nice crate. <laughs> and I used this really pretty tarp to give her a nice dark space to feel comfortable and not exposed um, to the elements. This tarp is really cool. This company, Tarpistry, sent it to us. And they sent it to us for free, but we have used it a lot. Every time we go to the river or go on a picnic, and now I'm using it to cover my chicken coop because I don't want to use my sheets or my nice blankets and I don't have a lot of extra living in the camper. So this is actually perfect for quarantining my chicken. If you're interested in one of those tarps, I'll link it below. And I, they did give it to us for free, but I'm really pleased with it. So I'm happy to link the product if you're interested. And you'll probably see us use it a lot this summer because we've already used it so many times. Arthur is actually doing school, which really blesses me so I can work with these chickens. Oh, yeah, these chickens. There's now two of them. This is starting to get a little bit crazy around here. Hey, chicky chickies. If they're egg bound, which that's how they're acting. I've read so much about chicken illnesses and they're acting egg bound. Um, you really need to do this um, Epsom salt bath and then the oil around their vent multiple times. So we're gonna keep trying. Grace got me full on obstetric glove. <laughs> That's fine. So her vent actually looks really clean. So we're just gonna set her down in this water. She relax down into it in just a minute. Pretty amazing how chickens really don't like water, but in my limited experience, they like this. You just wanna make sure their vent is sitting down in it. I'll hold her in here for about 20 minutes. I'm also gonna, while we're sitting here, I'm gonna try to find her ears. I've never looked inside a chicken's ears before, but I'm gonna do that right now. Do you know where chicken's ears are, honey? And I may treat her for ear mites, though I don't think that's the issue. So right here, kind of beside her eye, is this little flap of feathers. It's just a tiny little flap. And you just move that aside. I don't see any mites. I don't see an infection. So she's looking good there. Hey, Alice. I'm going to rub some oil around her vent. Next, I'm gonna give her some um, Epsom salts internally. You're supposed to just kind of put it beside, and this dropper may not work real well. You're supposed to just kind of put it beside their mouth and wait for them to drink it instead of putting it in their mouth because it can um, get into their lungs. So if you just kind of drop it out next to them and then they drink it just like that. Good job. That's my first time doing that. Look, she's going right in on her own. She's like, I'm done with that. All right, grab the other chicken, Gracie. I'm going to do all this with the other chicken now. Oh, Mommy, there's some poop in there. Yeah, I know. It was... So I did see some poop in there. It looked fine. It wasn't diarrhea. It was totally the way chicken poop was supposed to be, firm with some white on top. And I am going to get some DE today and treat them with DE tomorrow, which will kill any lice or mites that they have on them. So we're just going to stick her in here. She'll relax down into it in a minute. The more I read, the more I'm pretty convinced that this chicken, anyway, is egg-bound. I kind of feel something in there. She's not pooping. The other chicken, though, had poop all over, which means that she's not egg-bound because an egg-bound hen cannot poop. That's what kills them, or it's one of the things that can kill them. But look at this. I, I, I had read something that said put a towel over the bowl, and they'll really, like, sink down in there and get super comfy. So I did. Now look, what, look at this. So cute. <laughs> oh, I mean, as sad as this is, that is so cute. She's just like all nestled down in that warm water. Come on, Lee. Come on. Exactly 30 days ago today, we put the cow on this section of grass right up here. 
and she's coming back to it today. We're gonna graze her on this strip along this side of the pasture. There's a ton of clover in here, her favorite, mostly uh, wild white clover. She's been out here in the back pasture for about a week and we cut it in half with this one wire. So she was up on this half, most of this bottom for a few days and then she's been up here the past couple days. But she's kind of run out of stuff to graze. And that's because there's a lot of stuff out here she doesn't really like to graze. Uh, the goldenrod and other kind of um, woody perennials. Now I'll just walk back through and drop the wire out of this, this whole section and collect these posts as we go. Bring those posts out here to me so we can set them all the way down the farm. We are not putting the cow on the same small daily grazing sections that we have been the past month. There's one simple reason for this, and it's I think that the cow will be happier on larger sections. The reason I think that is because a daily grazing section for this cow is extremely small, and she can't run and exercise and stretch her legs very much, and every time we open up that fence, she would run and jump like crazy. Never caught it on film. But it made me think, she really enjoys moving, running, walking. So we're actually gonna give her a little bigger sections. She's gonna have a larger area to graze. We have a lot of seed head production out here in patches that haven't been grazed evenly. And this just tells the grass to put the brakes on, on growing um, this stuff, which is more what you want them to eat, the blades of grass, because the seed, the grass just wants to produce seed. That's its goal in life. I may actually come out here and weed eat the top off of all these little patches, but it's a pretty big job because it would be hours, honestly, of just going through tediously knocking it out. We'll see if I get to that. She's got a nice area to graze. You'll notice that she is as clean as she has ever been with this regular moving. She has no manure on her. Totally, totally clean everywhere. We've never had a cow quite this clean before. <laughs> Chilling in the shade? Yeah. We are working on Bree's garden out here and filling it in with different perennial plants. Do you want to tell them what you're planting today? Yeah, some are annuals um, that can be seeded. You can collect seed them. It's pretty easy to do that. So I've got lupine, foxglove, hollyhocks, borage, mint, yarrow, more borage. I've got some herbs like um, I've got tulsi. I also have herbs up in the garden, but I just like having herbs down here because then we can smell them when the wind blows and harvest them easily from the kitchen. I have lemon balm. I'm about to plant hyssop, sage, oregano, a lot of stuff. You have <laughs> so a lot of dirt it, on your face. Do I really? <laughs> Am I covered in dirt? I've been having a good time. There are a few things that aren't perennial, and then there's a few things that aren't, that are just ornamental. But a lot of it has medicinal and culinary uses, which I, I like that. But then they make a beautiful flower, mint. A lot of herbs make gorgeous flowers. Um, my favorite being the Tulsi basil. It's my favorite tea and my favorite herb flower. And then mint is actually one of my favorite plants in the whole world because it just refreshes you and lifts you up and it's so beautiful and easy to grow. What a beautiful spring evening. Guys, it's been another great day in the homestead. I actually look forward to seeing this video because I don't know all that's in it. Brie filmed most of it. I know she did a great job and I look forward to watching it. So. We'll see you tomorrow, and I hope you have a great evening. Goodbye.